In the Philharmonie, the concert hall in Berlin, the Vienna Philharmonic Orchestra, making a major European tour, is preparing to play Mahler's Ninth Symphony under their distinguished guest conductor, Leonard Bernstein. Leonard Bernstein feels a very close affinity with Mahler and his music, and for this programme, which will take us back from this performance to the rehearsals for the symphony some weeks earlier, Mr Bernstein also recorded some notes and guidelines, setting out his conception of the Mahler Ninth Symphony. All of Mahler's nine symphonies look two ways at once. On the one hand, nostalgically back to the innocent past, the beauty of childhood, and then having failed to find it, looking hopefully or fearfully forward to some sort of resurrection or solution. What this amounts to is finding a way of saying goodbye to life. And you'd think that after eight symphonies of having said goodbye in one way or another, Mahler would have said all he has to say on the subject. But as it turns out, in his ninth symphony, he succeeds in writing perhaps the greatest farewell symphony ever written by anybody. In each of the four movements, he is saying goodbye to something. In this first movement, it is more than anything a farewell to tenderness, passion, a farewell to human love. The rehearsals for the Mahler Ninth, three very arduous days, took place back in Vienna in the Sophian Saal. This is the second session on the first movement. I'm fond of seeing. The first thing we hear in this movement is actually a premonition of death in the form of an irregular rhythm which I've always been convinced is a documentation by Mahler of his own irregular heartbeat. He was terribly concerned with his heartbeat. He was in the last year of his life. He knew that he had this heart condition and he set it down as the opening of this symphony. And coupled with this heartbeat, which is doom-laden, is the other main germinal source of the movement, which consists of only two notes that signify in their falling position, goodbye, leb vol, adieu. The symphonies aren't supposed to be about anything, but Mollett knew that everything he was doing was tied up somehow or other with two things. One, the whole 
problem of life and death, and B, with music itself, the whole symphonic structure that had been created since Mozart and Haydn, and of which he was the final architect, and he knew it. And knowing it was a great burden because he knew that in each of these pieces, he was not only wrapping up the history of German and Austrian music, but he was also saying goodbye to it. I have tried in the past in performances of this and other Mahler symphonies to underplay early climaxes, to save, also for, for my own sanity, for the sake of the orchestra, so that they don't give their all and have nothing left. It's impossible with Mahler. You have to give everything you have emotionally to bar 39 and eight bars later even more. Mahler knew that he was close to death, and as a matter of fact, he never lived to hear the symphony performed. He was constantly asking his wife to listen to his heart and say whether she thought it was going normally or irregularly. When they went on walks, he could walk only a certain number of steps per day, and he, in fact, carried a pedometer with him to measure how many steps he took. And he became obsessed by this irregular heart rhythm, and if you doubt that, you can doubt it no longer when those rhythms reappear at uh, various climaxes of the first movement in full blast. And uh, there's always a timpani then to tell you that the fatal strokes are at hand. <laughs> exactly the way a heart should not go. Don't. 